uh, today I'm going to talk about how to set up um, a LoRa One uh, network. Okay, uh, we're using this. <coughs> uh, we're using something called the Things Network, which is a platform for LoRa One. Uh, has okay. Just a quick show of hands. Who has heard of LoRa Long Range Radio? Who has heard of it? Okay, so maybe about half. Pretty good. Okay. I didn't know about LoRa until quite recently because of a project that I did. Yeah, or we are doing. Yeah. Okay, so this uh, one we'll talk about. We we'll introduce some terms related to LoRa. Then how to set up the gateway, setting up a node, and then uh, we'll talk about a possible project that we're doing with this technology. Okay, so LoRa stands for long range. Okay, so <coughs> it's a uh, it's it's acquired by Semtech. Okay, the, they bought the the rights to manufacture the all the LoRa bots. So all the LoRa bots in the world is manufactured by one company, Semtech. Yeah. So it uses uh, unlicensed radio spectrum, so you don't need a license to use it, unlike uh, military uh, frequencies and all that. You know, like our radio walkie-talkie, the ones that police use, yeah, that's un unlicensed. So in the band called ISM, uh, Industrial, Scientific and Medical. So this ISM band uh, differs from country to country. So in Singapore, uh, we also have allocated certain bands for that. Okay, so the good thing about LoRa is that it's, it's long range, right? It goes up to kilometers. In the rural areas, it can go up to like 10 kilometers. Okay, another good thing is low power, so the battery can last for 20 years because it uses very, very little power. Okay, so this is uh, like a map of all the possible IoT technologies. Alright, so LoRa falls under this area, the low power wide area network. It's uh, similar technologies include Sigfox and... Uh, yeah, just Sigfox. I'm not <laughs> okay, yeah. So, the, you know, it, it, I mean this is categorized according to the range, right, it's mostly by the range. So proximity would be like Bluetooth, you know, then Wi-Fi is, uh, you know, like in the room and so on. So the, like our cellular is very, very long range. Okay, so this is a one minute video on what LoRa is about, for those, uh, just a quick one. Okay, you can track farm animals, okay, because LoRa actually enables uh, geo-tracking without GPS. It's actually possible to do that because you can track all the RSSI signals and based on the strength, you can know where the location is. And also, you know where all the gateways are, so you can actually calculate where the animals are. Okay, air quality and pollution monitoring. Okay, so there, there's a difference between LoRa and LoRa 1. LoRa describes the physical layer. LoRa 1 is actually the, the protocol, right, the, the non-physical layer. Okay, so this is what a typical LoRa One architecture looks like. Okay, there's a <coughs> all your nodes are here. Okay, where all your sensors are over here, and then there's a gateway, which is uh, what we have here. A gateway is the one that receives all the uh, signals from the nodes and then connects it to the internet via a server. So in this case, the server that we're using is called the Things Network. The reason why we chose Things Network is that it's free. I mean, yeah, it's free, and uh, and it's a community-based network. So that's why we chose it. <coughs> okay, so there's another. Uh, there's this thing called LoRa Alliance, because LoRa is still quite new, relatively new, it just came out in the last couple of years, so uh, they're still working on standardization, right? So there are like a few hundred companies who come together to meet up and talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to explain this. 
Okay, so how do you set up the gateway? Uh, <coughs> we have the, we bought this uh, Sem Sempec uh, chip. Okay, it's produced by this Chinese company called Rug Wireless. Okay, so what we have here is the Rug uh, 831. Okay, it's, uh, it's with the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi acts as the host controller. It processes all the signals and it's the one that actually connects to the internet by the Wi-Fi. Right? <coughs> and uh, we, you have to use the latest Raspberry Pi, Model B. Uh, and then the nodes you can use, uh, uh, and we use Arduino board, uh, a shield called the RUG811 and Arduino Uno. Okay, so we are using the uh, the hardware connections, this is the hardware connections, SPI, okay, so uh, it's quite standard. Okay, SPI, you have to, so when you set up, the, you have to do a RESPI config, set up the SPI, enable it, and then you connect the wires to the yeah, SPI pins. Okay, you set up the Wi-Fi on your Raspberry Pi, and then you clone the installer for the gateway. This is from the Things Network. <coughs> so this, uh, it has a chip called the IC880A, that's called the, the, the name of the chip itself. It's called Concentrator um, Chip. Okay, so when you're setting up, you have to know what your EUI is. It's unique to every device. Every device has a very unique EUI. You need this to set up um, <coughs> your JSON file, all right? And then you have to fork it from, this is the Things Network um, repository. <coughs> Okay, so it looks something like this. Okay, it looks something like this, right? So you're telling it uh, which gateway, the server address, and the, the GPS location. Alright, so there are online instructions on how to configure it. You need to upload it to the Things uh, Network GitHub repository. Okay, then the next day, once it's, uh, the, the administrator uh, accepts your, your fork and then you merge it, it will download the, <coughs> the JSON file into your uh, Raspberry Pi. And then you need to configure that, All right? It's in this folder. <coughs> you need to configure it according to the, uh, the the region you are in, based on the frequency. So Singapore uses uh, the AS nine two three. AS stands for Asia. There's one for Europe, for Canada, and so on. So in Singapore, we use the frequencies from nine two zero to nine two three megahertz. <coughs> okay. Then the next thing you need to do is to register your gateway on the Things Network. You have to go to the website, open an account. And then uh, <coughs> using your gateway UI, <coughs> you register your gateway. Okay, so setting up a node uh, is quite, quite, quite a few steps. Okay, first you have to set up the software uh, serial um, pins, and then uh, you usually select the over-the-air activation because it's more secure. So <coughs> over-the-air means that okay, and then first of all, uh, you also need to get the device UI from your your uh, shield, okay. So how you do that is you use AT commands. So once you have the, you need quite a lot of information to set up the node. You need uh, the app UI, the developer UI, app key. And then uh, after you have activated it on Things Network, this will be generated dynamically for every session that um, that you connect to. So <coughs> getting the device UI, uh, you can do it through Arduino Sketch. To the library using the function show status and then you appear in the serial monitor. Okay, then after that you have to go to the things network and register your device. Okay, then the app key and the app UI will be generated. So once you have the, the app UI and the key, right, uh, you can <coughs> activate, you can actually join it now uh, through over the air activation. And the, the other information, the network session keys, app session keys will be negotiated with every activation. Okay, so we use the Arduino library to communicate with the, the Things Network server. So we connected a humidity and temperature sensor, right? So you will send, you can actually see it in the console itself, okay, the Things Network console. Okay, so how we came about to do this project is because uh, we found out that uh, Pulau Ubin, it's two thirds of the island is not connected by cellular. So what what's happening is that every week there are people getting injured on the trails, and it's uh they always call like triple um, nine, so they it, it's quite tough like, I mean like the <coughs> when you're not uh, it's hard to get help. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we came up with the idea of using Laura to create like uh, help stations throughout the island. Okay. So when people see like a help button. You know, they'll be like within line of sight, they can activate it. Then 
the medical, there are three medical stations in Ubin. They are in the southern part of the island where there's a cellular network. So they'll know exactly where it is based on the number. Alright, then we, they can send an ambulance there or something. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so uh, what is it about this? Oh wait, I bring it to the end. Okay, so Okay, so we, we started trying to do some testing. There's this place called the Ubin Living Lab. Uh, so we tested the range of Laura, it was quite good, it was almost a kilometer, but then we started to go downhill and then the ground blocked the, the signal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we presented our project at Ubin Day <coughs> recently. Um, so yeah, so we talked to Red Cross, this guy from Red Cross and this guy from the police coast guard. They actually expressed interest in uh, uh, in working with us on this and uh, National Parks is the one that's uh, administrating the island, they're administrators, so we're also talking to them. Yeah, we have to thank Donna for helping to uh, us to talk to the, yeah, to the government agencies. <coughs> yeah, so this was our presentation. Okay. Oh, we visited the residents as well. That's Donna, see Donna there. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so uh, let's continue, sorry. Uh, let's <laughs> So this is a prototype that uh, I did. Uh, so we uh, used LoRa, but I didn't use the LoRa one. So it's just, just a simple LoRa. It's just one to, one to show the proof of concept, right? How it works. So help requested, you press the button, the red button. The medical <laughs> center, like emergency, or help requested which station number one. Okay, then you press the button to acknowledge. Helps on the way. Then you receive a, a, a signal. Uh, yeah, that helps on the way. Okay. So this is the prototype, and that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. How long did it take? Oh, so yeah, it's very rough. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so this uh, we are talking to end parts on this. Uh, it's a it's going to be a community project. So if you are interested in helping out, uh, please do let me know. Uh, I'll include you in the WhatsApp chat group, and then we'll we'll try to meet up like once every week or two weeks, you know, to uh, create a prototype. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.